Hi friends, my name is Angela and welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a tag video which is the TBR book tag. We're going to go through my TBR and I'm going to share with you a number of books that are on my TBR. I'm going to share with you some books that I want to read, some books that maybe are on my TBR that I probably have no plans of reading in the future, some books that, that are not even published yet that I really want to get hold of. So let's get into it. And at the very end, I'm going to share with you how many books are actually on my TBR, which might be a surprising number. It was for me. So let's get into it. The first question is, how do you keep track of your TBR pile? And I have a couple of ways I I do this the first thing is I use Storygraph so if there's a book that I want to add to my TBR virtual pile I'll include it on there uh, if there's a book that's on my physical TBR it'll be on that list as well and I also have a physical shelf on my bookshelf that is my TBR shelf so I have a few like books that are not read yet that are kind of scattered throughout but the books that I'm being purposeful with that I really want to read in the near future I have kind of segregated to one little section and I actually shared a video with you with my spring TBR and you can kind of see me put together that shelf so you can see how it looks like and I'll share a link to that video below but those are the two main methods I have in how I manage my TBR and that's working okay for me for now it allows me when I am for example if I'm doing some book shopping if I wander into a bookstore I'm able to kind of jump onto Storygraph straight away I can filter by books that I don't own I can look at maybe books that are new releases and I can see what ones I have flagged that I might be interested in likewise if I'm in a secondhand store I can look at books that maybe were published a while ago that might be in there I can have a look and see if they've got those in stock so it really that works for me in being able to keep a track of what I want to buy what I want to uh, bring into my home is your TBR mostly print or ebook a hundred percent print I don't read ebooks at all I don't have an e-reader I have an iPad which is about 15 years old so it's probably a first or second generation iPad and I don't even have I couldn't I don't even think I have a charger for it so it's all print how do you determine which book from your TBR to read next? This is a bit of a mishmash answer. It's, I kind of go with mood generally. I, first of all, I try and stick with that TBR shelf that I have, and then I go with mood. But sometimes there's a book that is seasonal. Uh, sometimes there's something that is topical that I want to read. Uh, at the moment, I'm doing a little project for something I want to share with you guys. So that is kind of leading my reading at the moment. It's less mood based and it's more project based. And that's kind of that's how I'm guiding my TBR at the moment is I'm kind of being led by those two things. It's either what's on my spring TBR shelf or what is being led into this project. But that said, I'm reading a couple of books that have nothing to do with those things that have just come my way by happy accident and I'm happy to pick those up too. So that's kind of how it happens. A book that has been on my TBR for the longest. I, I'm not 100% that this has been on there for the longest, but it's got to be pretty close. And that is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. Now I know this has been on here for a long time because I have a bookmark in here and the bookmark has a date on it. This is from Oprah's Book Club. And I don't know if it's actually marking where I was in the book. Anyway, the bookmark is great because it actually has a the cast of characters. It has all of the names of all the people. It has who they are, how they're related to each other. And then it has like a reading plan on here as well. It was really good back when Oprah was the book club queen. At the bottom, it has the copyright information which is 2004. So I've had this on my bookshelf since 2004 and I have not finished it. I did start reading it initially back when, I guess when the book club came out. But anyway, that's most definitely what's been on my bookshelf for one of the longest, if not the longest. A book that I recently added to my TBR. I came across this in a secondhand store recently. I wasn't looking for it, but I, I knew I wanted to read it, 
but I wasn't purposefully looking for it. And I came across this edition of Anne of Avonlea by L.M. Montgomery. I read Anne of Green Gables last summer. I have never read Anne of Avonlea and I saw this beautiful little edition. I really liked the cover, so I bought this one recently secondhand for $6, which was a great little buy. Another physical book that recently added its way to my TBR is Hunting the Falcon, Henry VIII, Anne Boleyn and the Marriage that Shook Europe by John Guy and Julia Fox. I'm fascinated with this era in Tudor history, the lengths that Henry VIII went to to be able to secure his dynasty is incredible and the fact that a new religion was um, adopted into Britain is incredible, breaking with the Roman Catholic Church and I just, I don't think we really understand how much, what this meant at the time. So this book is not small. It is quite big. Uh, some of the reviews I've read are that it is perhaps too long. But anyway, this is one that I've recently added to my TBR and I'm glad I got it. It only came out just the very recently this year. And I have a few virtual ones as well. So these are ones that I haven't physically got copies of, but I've added them to my virtual TBR. So these are ones that I'm just gonna keep an eye out for eventually. And this one is called The $64 Tomato. And it's quite a long little subtitle, which is how one man nearly lost his sanity, spent a fortune and endured an existential crisis in the quest for the perfect garden by William Alexander. And I'm, it's pretty much what it sounds like. It's this one guy's journey to grow the perfect tomato and it's led me down this bit of a rabbit hole of adding quite a lot of William Alexander's books into my TBR. He's got another one about learning French and being immersed in uh, becoming, a, a, a learning how to speak French. Another one about learning how to bake bread. So I think I'm going to be buying all of his books but this one is definitely at the top of the TBR. I've also added The Feast by Margaret Kennedy to my TBR. I'm trying to keep an eye out for that second hand at the moment, which is proving difficult. Uh, it was published in like 1949, I think. So it's, it's, it's not exactly everywhere in bookstores and I might end up having to buy it new. Like a lot of re-editions are coming out with it. And another one is Cherry Wood by Jock Sarong and it's a new release. I think it just came out this month. He's an Australian author and this sounds like a very, very interesting read. The summary is that there are two, two separate timelines going on. In Edinburgh 1916, a rich Scottish industrialist Thomas Renfeather impulsively embarks on a mad scheme to build a paddle steamer out of a dubiously sourced European cherry wood on the other side of the world in booming Melbourne, Australia, but nothing goes to plan. In Melbourne 1993, Martha is a clever, lonely and frustrated lawyer. One night on impulse, she stops at a strange pub in Fitzroy, the Cherrywood, for a bottle of wine. The mysterious building and its inhabitants make an indelible impression and she slowly begins to deduce odd truths about the pub. It says it's a novel that is darkly delicious, playful and rich about legacy, community, wonder, love, reinvention, a haunting, magical and true original. So that's something that I've recently added and it just... Like, I think it's the last month that's just come out in stores. A book on my TBR that I never plan on reading. This is this was a bit confronting because I have high hopes to read everything on my TBR, but in all reality, there are books that I probably will never read for a variety of reasons. I think one of them on my virtual TBR is there is my family and other animals that I would love to read, but I loved the TV show so much, I don't know if I need to read the book. So that's one of them. Pr tell me otherwise if I... Tell me otherwise if I should definitely read the book. Another one is Foles Bread by Gillian Mears. It's a few years old, maybe 2011 or 2014, I can't recall. But I've heard the writing is beautiful, but the subject matter is tense. It is confronting and challenging. And maybe you need to be a super duper horsey person to get into it, which I was as a teenager. And I think for that reason, I really might appreciate it. But anyway, it's one of those books that I, you know how there's those books that are, you know are going to be challenging and you, you want to pick it up, but every time you see it in a store, you have all intentions of buying it, but then you put it back down. And that's kind of where I am with this book. I'm not sure yet if I want to get it and buy it. So it's on my virtual TBR just now, and I don't know if I will get it, but we'll see. We'll see. And I think there is a third one. I just went and got it. It is Hold Still by Sally Mann. I've had this 
for a number of years. I don't think I got it when it was first published, but it's pretty close. So it was published in 2015. Gosh, so we're coming up to 10 years that I've had this book. I was a photographer. Um, I thought this would be really great. I just never got around to reading it. It's a very heavy book for as it's not huge in comparison to Hunting the Falcon. It's not huge, but this is just as heavy, I, I think. So I'm not sure if I'll read this one. I don't know. Like photography is no longer my career. I don't know if I'm that into it. Sally Mann's an American photographer. I don't, I don't know. A book on my TBR strictly because of its beautiful cover. I have a few of these, but there are some that have added there are some that have found their way into my virtual TBR because of their covers. The first I just saw in the bookstore just this week, which is called Mural by Stephen Downs. And it's a very small book. It's only 200 pages. The cover is incredible, but the, in, the, 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 the contents sounds harrowing. And I, so I don't know if I want to pick it up. Mural is a haunting confession by a psychopath known only as D. Held in a secure facility, he has been asked by his psychiatrist to write down his thoughts, admissions, anxieties and uncertainties. They are at first revealed through the stories of other people's lives and obsessions. Specifically, D is preoccupied with a British man who spent his early years as a school teacher in Australia before becoming a renowned sexologist. Dee is also consumed by Australia's most prolific public artist, a man whose hardy erotic watercolours are at odds with his stained glass church windows. Dee writes of his meetings with a boyhood friend. He recounts the true tale of a Frenchman who went mad because he believed prehistoric stones in Brittany were shifting. It sounds complicated and confronting, but the cover is incredibly beautiful. So I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those, <laughs> do you buy it because it's so like, maybe that was a marketing gimmick, maybe. Another is The White Cockatoo Flowers, which is a collection of stories by Wu Yang Yu, and the cover is just absolutely beautiful. It's a selection of short stories, it's all fiction. Storygraph summarizes it as a perfect fit for readers who appreciate nuanced explorations of identity, culture, and the human experience, particularly those who have navigated the complexities of migration, cultural displacement, and the search of belonging. I think it sounds lovely. And it just came out this year, so it's brand new, but the cover's pretty. And you know I love a good bird cover. <laughs> And then there is one more book with a beautiful cover, and that is The Garden Against Time, The Search for a Common Paradise by Olivia Lang. And, and I don't think this is out yet in Australia. I think it might come out in October. I'm not sure, but the cover is just beautiful artwork. And this is a little summary. In 2020, Olivia Lang began to restore a walled garden in Suffolk, an overgrown Eden of unusual plants. The work drew her into an exhilarating investigation of paradise and its long association with gardens. Moving between real and imagined gardens from Milton's Paradise Lost to John Clare's Enclosure Elegies, from a wartime sanctuary in Italy to a grotesque aristocratic pleasure ground funded by slavery, Lang inter interrogates the sometimes shocking cost of making paradise on earth. It sounds like a really beautiful uh, deep dive into the whole concept of gardens and why we create them and, you know, creating these little Edens. And uh, I would really like to get it. I think it would be a really lovely companion to the other book I shared with you a while ago called Why Women Grow, which was another one based in England. Anyway, I definitely was attracted to this one because of its cover. An unpublished book on my TBR that I'm excited for. I've actually pre-ordered two books. The first one is Dusk by Robbie Arnott. I haven't read a Robbie Arnott. He is very, he's Australian author. He is very well known for a bit of magical realism, you know, like plants talking and, and that kind of thing. And I'm not sure if I'm into it, but this new book of his sounds interesting. In the distant highlands, a, a puma named Dusk is killing shepherds. Down in the lowlands, twins Iris and Floyd are out of work, money and friends. When they hear that a bounty has been placed on Dusk, they reluctantly decide to join the hunt. As they journey up into this wild, haunted country, they discover there is far more to the land and people of their highlands than they imagined. And as they close in on their prey, they are forced to reckon with conflicts both ancient and deeply personal. It's giving me some Northwoods vibes and I'm 
I really want to get a Robbie Arnott under my belt. I really, really do. He is one of our most popular writers, and I think there's a reason for it, but I've been afraid to read his books for a while. But he does write about nature, and I think I just... I love nature writing, but it's just that magical realism a little bit that frightens me. So anyway, this sounds like up, it might be up my alley. I've pre-ordered it, so we'll see how that goes. Another one that I've pre-ordered is A Thousand Feasts from Nigel Slater, which is a collection of memoirs, and it, I think it might be coming out in time for Christmas. Uh, Nigel Slater's writing is just beautiful. I really do love it, and I... I remember watching a lot of his uh, cooking shows and his writing. I can hear his voice in his writing. So I really do enjoy that. Uh, so that I've got that pre-ordered as well. And a third one I think that I would like to maybe, I want to see it and hold it and have a look through it first before I commit to it, is called Kitchen Sentimental from Annie Smithers. And it sounds like it's a collection, again, a similar collection of memoirs along with recipes but I would like to flip through it a little bit because it could be very similar to the Nigel Slater book. A book on my TBR that everyone has read but me. There's a few because I've, there's a few. The first one I would have to say would be James by Percival Everett. I think the last time I read En Masse with people was probably Harry Potter, you know, experiencing that together, getting my book when everyone else got their book, reading my book with everyone else. But I hesitate doing that now. I like to take my time. I'll wait until everyone's done it and then I'll read it. I don't like being pushed into these things. So I will take my time. I will read this when I'm ready. But this is most definitely something that everyone has read. I am saving this up for summer. I don't know why. I'll probably just pick it up when the moment strikes and I'll be happy when that happens. So that's definitely one I feel everybody has read but me. Another is The God of the Woods by Liz Moore. Again, I'm going to I'm saving this one up for summer. And I think this will be perfect for summer. It, I've heard incredible things about it as well. So I'll just sit on that for a little bit. And I think probably if I had to select a couple of other books, it would probably be East of Eden. I feel like all... All y'all Americans read East of Eden this summer for you guys. You guys were reading it like it was going out of fashion. Everyone read East of Eden. And so I feel like maybe that would be my summer. Well, I've got it on my spring TBR. You all read it. You all read it. And maybe Emma, maybe like a Jane Austen, Emma. I have not read that all the way through. I've read maybe a quarter of it. But yeah, so there's definitely, there's four books that I most definitely think that everyone else has read but me. A book on my TBR that everyone recommends to you. I honestly can't think of anything that everyone recommends. I definitely get a lot of echoes when I start to talk about certain books. So maybe something in here, you guys will be like, read that, read that. Oh, Charing Cross Road. You guys were like all over that. You guys were all like, read that book. And so I did and I loved it. A book on my TBR that I'm dying to read. Okay, well, without going over these ones again, I have a few books. The Other Valley, this, I've been waiting to see this on the bookshelf. I haven't been able to find it on a bookshelf for a while by Scott Alexander Howard. This sounds quite interesting. I feel like, I feel like it might be a little bit science fiction-y, but I'm here for it. From what I understand, it is a book with two parallel or a couple of parallel universes. So there's a town in the center of this area and then there's uh, two towns on either side of it and one town is in the past and the other town is in the future and there is a young girl at the center of it I'm glad I finally got hold of it Rare Singles by Benjamin Myers I have been gatekeeping this for a few months because again this is some uh, look at it and you know I love Benjamin Myers I really really do love Benjamin Myers it is such a slim little read I this is a this is a poolside beach read if Ever I saw one. I think this is a little different for him from him because it's actually set in America, maybe. Whereas all the other ones I've read of his are set in uh, in the UK or in, in Britain. Uh, so anyway, Rare Singles by Benjamin Myers is definitely one that I want to read. And this one just recently arrived, which is Walking with Sam from Andrew McCarthy. This is a memoir, and this is about Sam McCarthy walking the Camino de Santiago with his son, Sam. 
And I really wanted to read this because my husband just walked the Camino de Santiago for the second time in two years in a row. I wanted to read an articulation of how that all felt. My my husband wasn't walking it for spiritual reasons, but I really do want to uh, kind of hear a perspective on it. I think it would be interesting. So again, this will be a summer read, I think. And the last question is, how many books are on my Goodreads shelf? Well, again, I don't use Goodreads. I do update Goodreads, but I don't use it primarily. So my Storygraph shelf has 650 books on my TBR. Of that, 117 books are physically on my shelf. I physically own 117 books on my to-be-read pile, which isn't too bad, right? I like... I feel like that's fairly conservative. You guys, I think there are people out there who are much, much, much higher than that. So anyway, that's the end of this little video. That's the end of this tag. I hope you enjoyed it. This glimpse into my TBR, into how I manage it, into the books I've got on the go or want to get going soon. And I'm not going to tag anyone in particular, but if you want to pick this up and do it, I would really love you to do it. Please tag me as well. I would love to see your response. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.